This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Join us each week for Everyday Tech on MPB Think Radio. We have an IT expert, a computer repair ace, and we troubleshoot your problems on the phones as well. Everyday Tech, Wednesdays at 10 on MPB Think Radio. Download the podcast now or listen on YouTube on the MPB Think Radio channel. Good morning, good morning. Ain't it a dreary morning house? <laughs> I always say it's a great morning. Now, I guess it is a great morning if you like rain and a little chilly stuff, but that's okay. Uh, this is a special edition of the Gestalt Gardener. I've got a lot of things to share. Got some really cheesy music, little, little clips, and a whole lot of things that you can be doing or washing for this time of year in the garden. I'm horticulturist Phil Rushy, and me and Java Chapman and all the other folks here at MPB, we got a special special drive time thing today. It's not going to be a live call-in program. We've got lots and lots of tips, some things that are going on right now that maybe you already know about or maybe you ought to have a heads up about. Yes, yes, yes. And they're out there, folks, four-leaf clovers in people's lawns, whether you like them or not. Good morning, Java. How are you this morning, man? Man, I'm doing fine. I can remember as a child, like, we would find clovers and threes are everywhere. Threes are everywhere, but we would just uh, just hope and pray you could find that four leaf clover. <laughs> well, I'm not I'm not gonna brag, but I found four, five, six, and one seven leaf clover. Wow. Yeah, and I wish I had a picture of it, but uh, anyway, uh, it's it's a it's a lucky omen. And uh, that's sort of what today is. You kind of surprised me on this. We're doing a pop up drive time. We're surprising everyone. It's a pop up. <laughs> yeah, it's a pop up drive. Um, and your um, Gestalt Gardener bandana, the green bandana, green on both sides, which is uh, um, auspicious on St. Patrick's Day. Yes, right on time for St. Patrick's Day is our um, is our premium, our uh, thank you gift for our uh, people who want to show their support for MPB Think Radio and all the programs that we bring. So yes, this is a pop-up drive and here we are. <laughs> yes, that's right. And we're going to be talking about it. Uh, folks, uh, we do have some some cheesy tunes. I've got a lot of little things to share with you that I'm seeing uh, happening around the state right now in gardens and a few events coming up. But uh, it is a drive time. And so uh, sit back, folks. Those of you who can, who can help support this program, it's a very successful program. Thanks to y'all. And uh, we'll be giving more information about that a little bit later. But uh, uh, before, l- let me go ahead and get a couple of things of business out. Uh, this weekend, uh, I'm doing something kind of unusual, job. You know, I like supporting local businesses. I was raised in a little small nur- nursery garden center, mom and pop place. And there's a, there's one that's changing hands down in Crystal Springs. Been in business for a long time. And uh, they, you know, they, they've been doing a whole lot of stuff uh, for a long time. Anyway, the owner is retiring. And what she did was she made her, her uh, business available to her best customer who happens to be a real gardener, Shella Batista. And she's called us a bunch of times, you know, with the Master Gardeners and Crystal Springs. Yes, she's, sir. Re- she's really involved in the community, and uh, she's taking on this mom and pop. It's not one of the shiny big box type stores. It's a place where you go, and it's, you know, it's got some funky stuff there, and it's got stuff where she orders plants that she would like to grow herself. Anyway, that's Saturday morning. I want to be at Crystal Springs. It's a place called In Bloom. In the bloom. Yeah, I know it's cold. We got some weird weather this weekend, job. Well, it ain't weird. What am I saying? It's still winter. Oh, we're come supposed on. to have this weather. But the, the but yes, just yesterday I was about to say a week ago, but just yesterday we tipped into seventy degrees. I don't know. If, I don't know if you can see how nasty. I, I'm stinking and nasty because I threw on yesterday's work clothes. <laughs> but I gardened all day yesterday. But uh, you know, you know, wrap up this thing about uh, Sheila Batista saying the in bloom. It's on Highway 57 in Crystal Springs. I'm gonna be down there in my truck with all the stuff in the plant. I cleaned it up a little yesterday, but uh, Saturday morning, uh, it's on Highway 57, just past the, you know, not far off, the, less than a mile off the interstate. Take the Crystal Springs exit, keep going till you see in, well, you see my truck outside with all the stuff in it. Look forward to seeing some, some of y'all, I'm t- supporting a really cool local business. And the best thing I like about those kind of places, we talk about it sometimes on Fix It 101 with the handy, uh, with the hardware stores, that knowledge. You can't get yeah. away from that knowledge because these are people who actually do it, not the, the, the 18-year-old who just needs a job after high school. You no, know? no, no, no. <laughs> so anyway, like supporting local business. There's not a whole lot of them out there. Well, there are a bunch of them out there, but they need support. And this is, uh, again, it's called uh, In Bloom, Crystal Springs, Highway 27, the main exit to Crystal Springs. Just keep going. We get off the interstate. 
about a mile, you'll see my, my green truck out there. That's going to be Saturday morning. Look forward to it. Um, we got a whole lot of other things going on at Java. I'm seeing, you know, because of this weird weather, people are of two camps. Those who are glad that they waited, those who wish they had waited. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm of both camps. I started some stuff, but I didn't put it in the, the summer stuff. You know, my tomatoes, my, uh, uh, I've got uh, some, some uh, peppers. Hadn't put them in the ground yet. I'll wait till after this weekend. But it's a great time to, to, uh, to sit back and think, what are you going to do this summer? We have all year to garden in Mississippi. You don't have to do it just like farmers in, in March or April. So uh, I've got a whole bunch of things coming up that, that like cold weather, not worried about it this weekend. My lettuces, my kale, my, my cabbage, my, uh, my, my pansies. Uh, the roses are blooming. This not that big a deal. They've been taking this for a long time. So this is normal March weather. And if it's a plant that's supposed to be out in March, don't worry about it. It's not that big a deal. If it shouldn't be out in March, well, maybe you'll learn for next year. I knew it was serious when I heard a, lo- a local weatherman um, talk about the changing in the, the temperatures and the weather. And he said, if you if you didn't wait to plant, you're going to be mad. <laughs> we, we have this thing called we have this thing called blackberry winter. You know, it warms up, blackberries bloom, and then we get a l- cold snap. It happens every year, and everybody acts like it never happened before. <laughs> but I understand, you know, our pineal glands they start swelling up. You hear the birds singing, and you see you know fragrance, and you know, you smell stuff, and you know, we just got to get out and plant stuff. Well, no, that's when you fix your cup of coffee and go out and look and enjoy and smell and savor and wait till till spring, which will be next week. Oh, we, oh, oh okay. Officially? Yeah. Okay. So we do the, is it the solstice or something like that? Oh, we could do that. We could do that. In, uh, actually, actually, we're going to be broadcasting live next week. I'm going to be in Virginia. Oh, talk okay. to the master. Go- we ain't talked about that, have we? Uh, this is live breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a program for master gardeners over in, in uh, Virginia, and then I'm coming back from there to give a program for master gardeners in Memphis next weekend. They're having a big thing out at the Agri Center, a whole lot of information about pollinators and native plants and stuff, and that'll be Saturday, March the 25th. So I'll be back. I'll be back. Uh, meanwhile, uh, it is drive time. Yeah, uh, today so, is a special special drive time program, um, and we're giving away your uh, Gestalt Gardener green bandana as our <laughs> as our great thank you. I mean, it's St. Patrick's Day, but like I've been telling people, today is the official holiday for St. Patrick's Day. But for the state of Mississippi and Jackson, the St. Patrick St. Patty's Day on next Saturday, next Saturday yeah. that's when that's when the real party uh, begins. You, and you, you are always in the in the mix. Got to be in Memphis. So, you know, I was counting on it being this weekend. Yeah, because your green truck is a staple in the uh, in, in the St. Patty's Day Parade. I do have some stuff in the back. Um, I've got pansies and violas. I've got uh, rosemary. I've got oregano. I replanted my rosemary because it it froze. But that's yes, what that's, gar- right. that's what gardeners do. You just replant. I got rosemary. I've got uh, oregano. I got some kale. I got some succulents and you know a few little things. But the, the truck's looking good. Looking good. You know, I, and I do that to show that. Anybody can garden anywhere. It's just a box full of potting soil. It has to be up against a pickup truck, back, back of the thing, where well, there's not much wind. So anyway, if you feel like you've got a brown thumb, can't grow much, you know, we're going to be talking about that every week right here on the Gestalt Gardener, encouraging f- folks to do what's doable. You know, not re- you know, reach for the stars if you want to, but let's keep one foot on the ground here, or, or better yet, in the dirt. <laughs> so, uh, hey, listen, uh, get some ideas. This bandana, people who call in and support this program, you know, whatever you can, if you can help support it. We got a this bandana, right? And it's a green bandana. It's got the Gestalt Gardener and all like that. And some uses for it. How about uh, making a hammock for a shrew? <laughs> put it out in the yard. Or, uh, you know, I don't know if anybody knows about Morris dancers, but if you put some bells on your on your ankles and you can wave around like a Morris dancer, but you can also make it a, a scarecrow out in the garden. You know, all it takes is a is a uh, for a scarecrow is a stick, a clothes hanger, any kind of long sleeve shirt. You don't have to have stuffing and all like that, and some kind of head, maybe made out of a milk jug. This is something kids can do with some kind of hat. But this uh, Gestalt gardener. Uh, uh, Bandana. Bandana. I want to say hanky. Too big for hanky. Uh, You can also uh, staple it up uh, in in the back of your tool shed. 
and you can make it you make it work just like that. That's right. Uh, anyway, if you got kids, maybe you can get them to come up with some stuff with it. But uh, anyway, what I'd like to do is see if folks will take it and make a little knot in it, put some flowers in it, send us a picture. Now, that would be pretty cool. That That's would be right. pretty cool. That's right. So anyway, uh, drive time. Help us out. Support MPB. we got so many things that we do, uh, and I'll share a few of those. But uh, mostly, I just want to uh, let folks know that this weekend is freaking a lot of people out. This is normal March weather. Relax. Uh, the only people I need to worry about are people who do stuff that you know you shouldn't have done. You know, you have to dra- I'm going to have to drag my uh, some of my tropical potted plants. I put them out to get some rain and some sunshine and humidity. I'm going to have to drag them in like everybody else. Um, my tomatoes, my pepper plant, um, I got some sweet peas I've, I've got ready to plant. They like cool weather, but I'm not going to plant them until after this weekend. Going to enjoy, going to savor this weekend, ride around and look at all the other, uh, the stuff that's blooming out there that likes March weather. Uh, I'm Horticulture's fellow Russian, me and Java Chapman and all the other folks at MPB. We thank you for supporting um, the Gestalt Garden and all the other wonderful locally produced programs here at Mississippi Public Broadcasting. And Java had an interesting experience yesterday. Talk to me. Uh, the Ag Museum. I got a little doctor's house, and I got a herb garden in the back. And I helped start that thing back in, like, the 1980s. And Master Gardeners have been taking care of it. And the la- last year, we revamped it. And I went over yesterday, sort of needing some stuff up, and make one of those woven wattle fences, you know, with the stakes, and you, you weave the sticks in between. Yes, sir. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And while I was there, this this, this lady brought her, her kid through there, and I was getting her little kid to smell stuff. And I said, what does this smell like? And it was uh, uh, r- rosemary. I said, I started to say, it's rosemary, a little, little bitty girl. She said, it's rosemary. Uh-oh. Yeah, but then I got her to smell some mint. I said, what does that smell like? And she said, chapstick. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's funny. That's cute. That's yeah, cute. Yeah, they did a study some years ago having kids uh, smell things, and here's what they, you know, what they smell like to them. And, uh, you know, it, 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 like every 10 years they do this. And what used to smell good now doesn't smell good. You know, manure used to smell like farms. Now it smells like poo. You know, but uh, one of the things that said uh, is, is kids when they smell a lemon, lemon zest. Now, uh, they they think it smells like like a toothpaste. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we're going to be talking about gardening every Friday. You know, uh, Java, I do a lot of emails. I work a lot with Mississippi Gardening Facebook uh, page. We also promote gardening events, and there's uh, a couple coming up. The the one in Memphis ne- uh, next weekend, next Saturday, is going to be at Agri Center. It's a master gardener thing, and we'll get more details about that uh, next week. But there's a couple of plant swaps. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's one in Florida at the library on Thursday the 30th, Flora Library. This is the oldest known plant swap in the universe. I've been doing it for 30-something years. And uh, it's weird plants and weird people. You know, people who, and you know, you you don't know who you're sitting next. It could be a retired doctor. It could be, you know, a carpenter's wife. It could be, you know, all sorts, shapes and sizes, cultures, everything. The only thing we have in common is we love plants. We love sharing. We love getting plants. So it's a it's a, a safe place for people who normally don't get out and meet with other people. I still remember Felder when we were doing our Felder on the road um, tour, and I believe it was, oh, was it maybe Tupelo? We went. We went. I cannot remember the place, but we were um, at the doing a live broadcast. It, it wasn't the tattooed guys, was it? Yes, they came up on the <laughs> motorcycles, and you know, it was kind of like, well, what's what's happening? But they came up, and they was like, we came to see Felder, and they started talking about the different plants that they had. Just well, to the point, like you said, with the, all different safe, shapes and sizes. Well, this it's a wonderful opportunity for for different kind of people to get together on safe ground. You know, food, music, plants. Those are things that that that. Hook us together. Anyway, there's also going to be one at the uh, in Mobile on April the first, Saturday, April the first. <clears throat> it's down at the Central Presbyterian Church. It's an ongoing thing. A lot, a lot of good folks. But uh, one of the things that that I, I really appreciate about plant swaps is they only swap plants that 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 they like, that grow well, that are easy to share. See, so it's sort of like a a footprint scattered across the country of people who. Have something in common, and I think that's that's kind of cool. Um, and I'm going to be at this uh, the, this 
the the in bloom garden center shifting hands Shelly Batiste has taken over a really well established small place has got you know funky plants and you know it's got tire planters and all that kind of stuff that's at Crystal Springs Highway 27 about a mile off the interstate Saturday morning look forward to seeing some folks there with that um, there's a lot of stuff going on in my garden right now, but I noticed the, the azaleas in my neighbor's yard have got thick leaves. They look like they've been blown up and inflated. The leaves are really thick and weird looking. Uh, and it's a, a lot of people are, are, are posting pictures on the Mississippi Gardening Facebook. And it's it real common. It's a fungus that only affects the first few leaves in the spring. It's not going to keep spreading. It's not going to kill the plants. You can admire them. You can pluck them off and throw them at a cat. You know, you can do whatever you want to. Not going to hurt the plant. It's really freaky looking. Ignore them or pluck them off. It's going to, as soon as the weather gets warm, it disappears. So that's one of those kind of things where if you go online, all these things you need to spray and you need to clean up and sanitize, blah, 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 blah. No, just ignore it. Ignore it. It's going to go away. It's fine. Java, you and I are going to be up at the uh, the Juke Joint Festival, the twentieth right. anniversary. That's, that's right. That's that's a month from now. It's going to be in in uh, middle of April. Uh, we're we're going to broadcast live from Clarksdale at the twentieth anniversary Juke Joint Festival. They got a, a, a garden center, old fashioned, like like we're talking about with with this thing at Crystal Springs, old fashioned, old school place where people come and meet and greet and get a few plants. So that's going to be. Uh, I forget what, it's going to be middle of, of April. Yeah, I believe April, let me pull up the calendar real quick, April 14th, April 14th. There you go. It's going to be live in Clarksdale. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you know, th- we were talking about uh, the past couple of three weeks about plant uh, about words that are related to gardening, but they sound like cuss words. You know, can you say this on the radio? What's the, the expression again? I forgot. Oh. Uh, uh, lollapizia. There we go. Lollapizia. lollapizia. You know, words that just bl- you just blurt out. You know, you wish you hadn't said, hope nobody heard. <laughs> well, uh, a, a, an alert listener sent in a new one. And I'm seeing this a lot with pl- plants got winter damage, certain shrubs and figs and stuff. There's a, an insect that bores into them and it pushes out these little, look like pencil lead things of sawdust mm. they look like like uh, they stick out oh a uh, half an inch an inch or so it just tubes of sawdust and it's called and this is the lollapizia word of the week frass oh <laughs> not making it up that's uh, hey we hey. haven't had to check the definition on that one <laughs> yeah oh frass my my, my fig got winter damage <laughs> Frass. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we you know there's a there's a whole lot of stuff that we do here with this program. Not just uh, you know just sharing information, but culture. It's culture. It's people sharing with other people. And I know you're going to do a clip in a little while uh, with a fellow called up. But uh, one of the things that I want to emphasize is I'm a retired extension horticulture professor. And I don't buy into all that science stuff. I'm a scientist, but there's a lot of stuff that we preach that horticulturists do that gardeners don't really need to do, like wait until April to plant. You don't have to wait till April, but you know it's a gamble. Uh, but there's a whole lot of things that that a lot of people say you have to do things a certain way. You have to do this, that. You know, got to be just precise. No, you don't. Because one is associated with uh, production. That's right. That's right. If you're trying to to fill a freezer or have lawn of the month or, or are you trying to, 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 you know, anything where there's a, a goal in mind. These little tricks help a lot. But if you're just knocking around the yard, you don't have to do that. So I spray painted my grass when I got back from England. Everything was brown. So I got me some red spray paint. I spray painted my ornamental grasses. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that doesn't make sense horticulture, but it sure did make me smile. A while I was at it, I spray painted a bowling ball and stuck it on a stick in, in them. You know, because gardening is about, is am, the word amateur comes from the, the, the word to love. To love, not to produce, but to love. So anyway, you want to have Yard of the Month, I'll make your eyes bleed with detail about what you need to do to have a a golf course tight lawn. You want to fill your freezer, I can help you with that. But if you just want to feel okay just having a little fun and messing up, I do too. I mess up too, and I lost a lot of plants like everybody else. So anyway, that's what we do. We try to, 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 to get it real. 
to reach people on 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 your level, whatever your level of interest is, uh, and commitment and abilities. And if you don't feel like you're up to it, w- welcome to the tribe. Yeah, and oftentimes on this on this show, Felder, we uh, you know we don't always keep it on um, uh, gardening and production because that's not what life is all about. So I got a clip uh, from a couple of weeks ago, and I I guess I was the the butt of the joke on this call. Let's uh <laughs> let's take a listen. Let's go up to Olive Branch, talk to Rick. Rick, how are you this morning? Good morning, guys. How are y'all doing? Good. Java's in uh, there. You should have seen Java's coat last week. He got a coat last week that just knocked me out. I don't need Java, that coat now. It's so I know, hot. But you were styling, though. You were styling. Anyway, sorry, Rick. What's up? That's okay. He's not trying to become a member of the Four Tops, is he? Uh, no, but you could probably get all four of them in that coat of his. <laughs> Rick, okay. uh, look, b- before I get uh, into my request, I want to say congratulations to our hometown hero that won the Daytona 500 last weekend, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Wow. Uh, yeah, I know. That's a, that's a big deal. Driving the Kroger like car. Mark. Dri- 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 yep, yep, no, dri- yep, there was. <laughs> Way to go, job! I'm proud of you. Listen, I'm going to ask this, and then I'm going to hang up and listen. Um, I've had – I had to really kind of beat my mom over the head to get her to uh, quit killing some of the reptiles and, and certain insects in her garden, you know, like the black and, uh, the black and yellow spider and yeah. uh, some lizards and stuff like that. Can you, uh, can you kind of run down a list of critters? People might find, you know, yeah. they're good for their golf. Yeah, that's what um, <laughs> I said I was going to do that. I just made a note. We'll do that next week. Oh, okay. Good good, <laughs> good, good critters for the garden. But, yeah, the, the guy, you know, it's a lot of people tune in this program <clears throat> just to hear people talk. Yeah. Because I don't know where the four tops was on his uh, on his playlist, but um, and and the fact that you knew who the NASCAR what what, what his car driver was was an esoteric combination of, of it's a confluence of weirdness right here on MPB Think Radio. That's right, nine and, o'clock on Friday mornings. Yep, yeah, and uh, and folks, we appreciate your support. And we got this bandana, this Gestalt Garden bandana. It's a big one. It's green. Uh, with white, uh, white, white lettering and designs and stuff, make a good little scarecrow. And we'd also like to s- to thank folks who support MPB uh, by calling in. We're going to give some details in just a second. And uh, you get one of these bandanas. And uh, we'd like to see some folks wrap up some flowers in it or do something to send us pictures of it. That'd be a whole lot of fun. So uh, anyway, if you got some garden events I can help promote, start next week. You know, send us a you know get get in touch with. Us. We'll we'll do that. You know, one of the things. That, that we're starting to, as soon as this little cold snap gets by, starting to smell things. When the weather, when the when the air starts to warm is when you start smelling the banana shrubs and the honeysuckles and all those kind of things. They start blooming, you know. And notice a lot of the native plants did not bloom early this year. But uh, Java, I took pictures a year ago at Eudora Welty uh, House in Jackson of a plant that, uh, a rose called uh, John, John, uh, Lady Banks Rose. It always blooms early. Uh, this year it bloomed a month earlier than it did last year. We've had a very, very strange winter. And uh, a lot of people getting the jump on summer. I encourage people to gather rosebuds while ye may. You know, don't wait till spring or wait till summer. Enjoy right now because we got some great, great things in our gardens 12 months out of the year. So, so it, it, savor the season, you know, instead of waiting for something else. Nice part about gardening. We plant for the future, but we enjoy what other people have planted before. That is true. And did you hear about, uh, well, I'm pretty sure you did. It was some new addition to the Eudora Welty House with the, the pottery uh, no. shed. They, re, they re-outfitted the um uh, the original 1923 uh, shed, and it's now available for people who come and work in the Eudora Welty Garden. Well, I know it must be the one that's way back in the backyard. I was just there the other day. Yeah, but, I believe it is. Yes. <laughs> hmm. Well, they've got a lot of a lot of old timey plants coming up there. The larkspur is starting to bloom. There's just so so much. It's just one of those old garden club type 
yards. And those are the kind of plants I grow because they don't care what the weather's like. They're going to do their thing. And also, there is a night blooming cirrus there? Yeah, yeah, which, which mine came from. Ah, okay. My night blooming cirrus came from my great-grandmother who got it from a garden club lady who had been at a garden club convention in Jackson, and Eudora's mother shared some of the cuttings. Is there an official, I don't know, it may be too hard to do, registry or lineage, you know, kind of <laughs> where you can say, well, I got this and, you know, go back and back and back? Well, sooner or later, it's going to all come back to the Garden of Eden, you know, <laughs> sooner or later. You know, dandelion started out there, too, you know. You know, so, no, it, 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 you know, I did a book with Steve Bender, the grumpy gardener from Southern Living. He, we, he and I did a book called Pass Along Plants years and years ago. Still still doing, still selling quite well uh, because it's about the people and the plants that they share. In this, but, yeah, there's, there's some lint. But every time you, you – that old orange daylily, everybody says, you know, that's just old ditch bank outhouse – common vulgar orange daylily thing they don't make seeds and it is the single most commonly plant commonly pass along plant on earth everywhere you go anywhere where people garden that orange daylily is there doesn't make seed which meant it came from somebody who got it from somebody got it all the way back to three thousand years or more that's so, amazing. Yep. So, so that shows a connection between the, the web that connects gardeners, which is what the Gestalt Garden is a web. It, you know, we connect people and, um, in a way that's fun, nonprofit, hopefully accurate, a little corny sometimes. <laughs> but speaking of their web, your web often crosses um, the globe. You, you take a trip to um, um, uh, Europe um, almost, I guess, in the summertime. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the times that you went over there, you went to the Royal Horticulture Show. Yeah. And talk with um, a few ladies about bottle trees, which you don't really see overseas. You, you, you don't. You don't. Have you got that clip? I do have that clip. Let's get into it. Okay, so I'm at the Chatsworth Garden Show, and I walked into the big floral marquee, and the first thing that I saw was a pair of bottle trees, a blue and a red bottle tree, and I met the ladies who put it together. Good morning. Good morning. And y'all are from Shropshire. What's the name? My name's Ingrid, and this is my daughter, Sarah. Hi. I walk in, I see these bottle trees, and there's a television crew crowded around it. I looked around, and you've got the, the book that I wrote said that you put it here for validation. Why do bottle trees need validating? Because nobody knows what a bottle tree is except us and the man that wrote the book, who turns out to be you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's stunning, though. You know, you've got these wonderful wildflowers and, and cultivated plants. You even have a, a little baby bottle tree. Yeah, it's, it's um, a clump of seedlings. <laughs> Well, it's, it's just incredible. And uh, how long have you been doing the bottle trees, just for the show? We've been looking at them for some time. We've been quite obsessed with bottle trees in our personal life. Why? For a, well, because sometimes you need a bottle tree in your life. And so I think we thought that the public needed to be educated in the way of bottle trees. Okay. It's the first time the public will have experienced them in all their glory. What are you expecting people to... You, I mean, do they even notice the flowers now? No. Nah. I mean, you get, you got lovely garden here. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, it's more about the bottle tree, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Which is almost a shame, but they do bring attention. Well, exactly, and we're all about the attention. <laughs> well, it's a lovely garden. The bottle trees just give it that little bit of... Uh, how, how the French say it? Je ne sais quoi. Which is um, in yes. French, right? This is wonderful, ladies. Thank you. It just thrills my heart. Thank you. Thank you. That's so weird, man. That's so weird. You know, I've been doing bottle trees a long time. I got one of the oldest. Got the, the tallest in Mississippi. But also, a lot of people don't get bottle trees. It's not just cheap old bottle trees. It's garden glass. And if you want to see more information about that, go to my blog. I've got an entire thing about the history. I've got pictures of them from all over the world, all sorts of garden glass. Felderrushing.blog. And at the very bottom, click on bottle trees. It's got a whole, it, it will stun you. Now, the stuff do, that I've seen. Do you go off, uh, or do you give an explanation about sometimes where they talk about it kind of traps the spirits or? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that goes back that, you know, that's, that's not just an, it's a Northern African thing. The, the Arabians had these, you know, the genie and the lamp, Aladdin and all like that. Mm -hmm. Genies and lamps, that goes back, 30, that's the 3,500 year old Arabian folktale. Hmm. So that's where that comes 
comes from. But uh, mostly it's about, I had a lady say, well, I just don't think that they're, I think they're kind of tacky. And I had to point out that she's hanging stuff out of holes in her ears. And I'm thinking <laughs> if she can do that, I can put bottles in my tree. And I have to say, um, when I took a recent trip to um, Washington, D.C., in the um, African-American History Museum, there is a bottle tree from a Mississippi artist, uh, Stephanie Dwyer. It's a, it's a weird web out there, man. It ain't just plants. It's also accessories. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it's special drive time, folks. We're going to be taking your phone calls next week. Oh, that's that's me messing up here on live that's radio. That's okay. I, you know, <laughs> th- th- y'all y'all, I, y'all make me put my hands in my pocket so I don't push buttons. But anyway, it's a special drive time thing. We'll be taking your phone calls like normal next week. And meanwhile, if you have questions during the week about gardening, uh, shoot me. Go to felderrushing dot blog. Has a big sign that says email me. Hey, I want to get a, give a shout out. Uh, I gave a talk to a garden club uh, in Loosedale last week. Okay, and also uh, we went up to uh, uh, day before yesterday to um, uh, I'm just drawing a total blank. Uh, Rolling Fork, and we were uh, downtown the the courthouse in Rolling Fork. They've got a Muddy Waters exhibit and all that. They blast out Muddy Water blues tunes from speakers outside the <laughs> county courthouse. Wow, that is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to give a shout out to Fairhope, Alabama, Magnolia, Arkansas, the mayor of Louise. Okay. And the Delta came to my talk the other day, uh, you know, to Foley, Pontotoc, Kosciuszko, Anguilla. You know, we've been doing a lot of stuff going around doing talks with garden clubs and master garden groups. But every week, we're right here on MPB, every week talking about garden, pulling people together, the screen, screen porch that we call the Gestalt Garden. And I don't think people, some, some people realize, but a lot of people don't realize we're here because of them. I mean, yeah. we are, you know, listener supported radio. So if we don't get that support, we, we try not to interrupt the, the regularly scheduled broadcast. But, you know, we have to come to you every once in a while and, uh, and explicitly ask for that support because it is so critical to what we do here um, at MPB Think Radio. Yep. And I'm not a, a know it all horticulturist. I am a horticulturist. I've, but I've got to bring my plants in tomorrow, just like you do. <laughs> I've got to cover up my little English peas, just like you do. I'm going to wait till next week to plant my tomatoes just like you should. And uh, I'm going to wait. I recommend people wait till April to fertilize your lawn. It's a little early to fertilize. But meanwhile, March is when we have the best wildflowers in the lawn. The dandelion, the hen bits, the wild clover, the oxalis. So many beautiful wildflowers that bloom in March in the lawn. And if you'll just leave them alone, they're covered with butterflies and bees. And come April when you start mowing, they disappear. It's okay to have winter meadow, winter flowers in the garden, and then start mowing in April and just have a regular lawn. It's okay to have both of them. You don't have to worry about uh, you know, uh, about people talking bad about you because this is a good thing to do. We call it No Mow March. Hey, I like that. No, no mo- mo- well, March. Well, I still, up north they have No Mow May. We've are, we've <laughs> wow. we, we've are, oh, we've already mowed our grass three or four times yes, by sir. May. But no more. <laughs> if you could just wait till April to mow those wildflowers, it's a win 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 thing. And the worst that can happen, neighbors going to talk about you. You can just do that little. I'm having a good time. <laughs> I'm helping the pollinators. Now, when it comes to fertilizing your lawn, are there any techniques, or do you just throw, throw the fur, just throw it out there? Just throw it out there. Okay. But I, but the turf management, MSU turf management, which I studied, says wait till it's been mowed a time or two. Got to green up, start a new root system, fertilize a little bit early. It uh, it doesn't help the grass, and it does feed your weeds. So let's wait till April if you can. But anyway, you know you don't have to. Luckily, you don't have to be ta- You don't have to look tall and smart to know about gardening. You know, this is a big tent. Gardening is a huge tent of every possible kind of approach. And that's what we celebrate here on MPB. Every possible kind of approach. Your garden, your way, we're going we're gonna to meet you there. Yes, sir. And it's a special drive time edition of the Gestalt Gardener. Uh, Coming up is Next Stop Mississippi, where we will continue to ask for your support. Um, 888-372-4483. We're giving away Felder Russian's green bandana for your support this morning. And Felder, I just want to say thank you for your support. 
here at the uh, at MPB Think Radio. Nothing but fun. As long as I don't have to look tall and smart, I'll be here. <laughs> anyway, see y'all at Crystal Springs uh, in Bloom on Highway 27 Saturday. And we're going to be back same time, same place, like we always do next week, talking about gardening, what's, on, what's going on or not in your garden. Um, horticulture's fell to rushing. Awesome producer, Java Chapman. You're the man, I got to tell you. I got to tell you. Anyway, we're going to take a a week-long break, come back and talk to you about your gardening. And uh, if you have a chance, take a kid to a farmer's market or garden center. It's going to be warm soon, and we're going to do what we do best, and that's get dirty. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone.